Sizzling in the midday sun. Sun reflector mats and coconut oil. So that's just to, like, just to bake us a little bit. <laughs> Two beautiful girls unashamedly cooking themselves. Just to have a nice healthy glow, I guess, all over. They judge you when you've got like a tan, and, but in the end, I suppose, if you don't have one, you're left behind. For most Australians, it's a rite of passage. Come summer, the long, lazy days at the beach and sunburnt skin. I live in Australia, you've got to have fun. <laughs> Stuff's pumping. How can I stay out You're not going to stay at home on a beautiful day like this. It's the sun damage done when we're young that most often leads to melanoma later in life. This year, 8,000 Australians will get the bad news. 1,000 of us will die. But what's alarming doctors even more is that amongst teenagers, there's a growing trend to ignore the sun safety message. The real problem is they continue to get sunburned. So many more now refuse to wear a hat. They refuse to wear sunscreen. Because of that, doctors predict that in five to 10 years, we will face a health crisis. So many more of those sun happy teenagers will get melanoma. Younger and younger people will suffer needless and painful deaths. I thought that I'd never get cancer, that I was invincible from the sun. That it couldn't happen to you? Yeah, that it wouldn't have happened to me, it happened to somebody else, somebody older. I thought that skin cancer only happened in old people. Turns out I was wrong though. Last year, Benjamin Foley was diagnosed with melanoma. He was 16. His brutal scars map his surgery to remove the mole and his lymph glands. But the threat isn't over. Having had one melanoma, his risk of having another is at least four times greater. Why do you think you got the cancer? Um, because I barely ever wore sunscreen. I do remember getting burnt quite a lot, you know, sore shoulders, peeling skin on the back and that sort of thing. And you know, it was just a part of growing up. These days, the only beach Stephen Nielsen visits is the local indoor swimming pool. Ready? Go. Even here, he wears a sun-safe shirt, and so does his eight-month-old son, Lachlan, who won't be allowed to make the mistakes Stephen made. It's a really hard thing to be told you're going to die. Stephen knows the dangers of melanoma. At 28, he's near the end of his life. Um, at the moment, I've got tumours in the bone in my spine, but two of them. Um, I've also got uh, a liver that's completely full of it. And um, I've got evidence of one in my lung. And um, they're all basically inoperable. Like any other Australian kid, Stephen spent most summer afternoons in the backyard in the sun. The initial melanoma was removed from here. He was 20 when first diagnosed with melanoma. Up here, that's yeah. a melanoma, another one. Since then, he's had 13 moles removed. Yeah. All tests showed he was clear. The lymph node biopsy that I had done. And then in June last year, Stephen felt a lump under his arm. His wife, Melanie, knew it wasn't good. We just felt really ripped off, didn't we? Like, yeah. it just was really not fair, um, you know, like, you, why, why, why do we deserve this? Stephen had lymph nodes removed from under his arm and radiation treatment, but it was too little, too late. The cancer had spread. I was very angry with the whole situation and I, thought, I felt it shouldn't, you know, I worked hard, I paid my taxes and it, this doesn't, I don't deserve this. And you're such a young man. Yeah, you know. Mm. It's... The grief I have is, is, is grief for the family that I'm going to leave behind, you know, people that rely on me or people that love me. Mm. You know, I should hope there's a lot of them out there, <laughs> but it's something that you never expect's going to happen. That's the biggest thing that I'm trying to deal with is the, the anger for, yeah, just to think that I used to lay on the beach thinking, oh, how lovely and brown I'm going to get. And Despite and her fair skin, not... 
24-year-old Renee Marchmont has always been a beachgoer. I've always said a, a face without freckles is like a sky without stars because <laughs> I have so many of them. So you've got the, the scar to show what you've been through so far. Yeah. Let's have it was when one of her so-called freckles or moles changed its shape late last year that her future became uncertain. Why do you have such a big scar for such a small freckle? Yeah, well I guess to make sure that it's, they've got it all. A week later, she got the pathology results from her doctor. And it was just basically, you need to ring your husband, this is not good. Yeah. So, sorry. No, you were OK. How, I mean, how did you react at that time? Oh, I was a mess. I, just, I was in shock. Because I just said to him, I have a 10-week-old baby, what do you mean? And he couldn't really tell me. He just said, you need to ring your husband, this is serious. Because I was, you know in there by myself and, yeah, so it's just very, I'm 24, this can't be happening, I can't. Where are you off to? Surgeons found the melanoma had spread to Renee's lymph gland. Now she faces another operation. For Renee and her husband, Mason, there's no hiding their fear. Well, yeah, I am feeling positive about it. It's just very um, scary, as to, I think, the depth the extent of it, of, um, I guess, just thinking about what my life would be like. Just hoping that we don't find another tumour. If we, you know, if we don't find another tumour, our um, chances are still fairly good. This is Australia's national, um, national cancer. And melanoma specialist Dr Jonathan Stretch says the statistics are only going to get worse. There's a difference between enjoying activity out in the sun and willfully just lying around and going down and deliberately baking. I mean, well, that's the thing that is perhaps the hardest um, to reconcile when you look at the consequences of it. 16. Today, Dr Stretch and the team at Sydney's Royal North Shore Hospital will remove the lymph nodes from the left side of Renee's groin. I just wonder how many people lying on a beach mm -hmm. ever consider that this could be okay. one of the results. Probably not many. It's a delicate hour and a half procedure to take out the gland and any cancer that may have spread there without damaging surrounding arteries and veins. And that's what all that surgery was about. Wow. And the best news will be that the pathologist can't find anything in, in that specimen. Yeah, let's um, hope. How soon will you be able to tell her? Um, it'll take the pathologist about a week. But for so many young Australians, ignorance is bliss. Six ben months Foley, ago, Ben Foley you, was one of them. Oh, really? yeah. Now he's yeah, back that, um, trying to save back. lives. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. How big was the mole? Sarah? The mole was only that big. Showing strangers yeah, his know. scars, Ben has no trouble getting the message across. I, I mean, I know it can happen, but it's just... I, I think I'm young and I don't think I'm vulnerable because I'm young. How old are you? 16. How old were you, Ben, when you got diagnosed? Um, when I was diagnosed, I was 16. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's scary, eh? Did you used to go down the beach every day? Or? Yeah, all the time. Oh, oh no. That's us. Ah! Is there a chance of it coming back? Yeah, there's a big chance of it coming back if they don't care. No, just because, like, not wearing sunscreen. Yeah, being out all the time. We don't realise how important it is. Incredibly, convincing Ben's closest mates is harder. They've watched him fight for his life. They're articulate and intelligent. <laughs> They're just not sun smart. Are you wearing sunscreen? Um, not at the moment, no. Why not? I just don't usually put it on. I'm a local here, so I'm always down the beach, and I guess I'm just used to not wearing sunscreen. You sort of get into a habit of not putting it on and just going down the beach. We see so many people who are totally unaware of the risks they're taking by seeking to become the perfect bronze Aussie. Let's have a look at your back if we could. Can you slip your t-shirt off for me? Professor John Thompson from the Sydney Melanoma yeah, Unit is, is Ben Foley's doctor. All right, now I understand that you're all regular beachgoers. He agreed to meet Ben's friends and put their sun-exposed skin under the spotlight. How often would you get sunburnt, do you think? In summer, probably weekly. <laughs> mm, it's not so much 
getting a little bit of sun from time to time, but actually getting sunburnt that does yeah. the damage. Professor Thompson's ultraviolet light reveals these young beachgoers have prematurely aged skin and suspect moles. And that one there is quite dark. In fact, that one there probably ought to be removed sometime. What does that mean in terms of their future prognosis, the damage that you saw there under that blue light? In five or 10 or 15 or 20 years, they are at very high risk of developing uh, skin cancers of all sorts, uh, including melanoma, which is potentially fatal. I didn't think I'd had that much damage, but knowing that there is something still, I, I really genuinely am scared for myself. If you're still not convinced this is serious, then as difficult as it is, meet John so Oten. We will just have a look at this today, John. 18 months ago, he had a small but suspect mole checked. Since then, the melanoma has multiplied so aggressively that 10 weeks ago, his arm was amputated. Were you, were you a sun goer in your youth? Well, like everybody who lives in Sydney, I went out in the sun. The tumours you see on John's chest and back are what most melanoma sufferers have inside their body as the cancer spreads. Out of sight, but just as deadly. I think it's very brave of you to sit here and show us what you're going through. Why are you doing it? If, um, if somebody can see this and realise the, the power of the sun, um, then it's done some good. Now, you don't have to answer this question, but what have doctors told you about your future? Basically, I'm in, in, it's up to me and my maker now. Medically and, and uh, so forth, there's no treatment that they've got at this stage that will, that will stop it. It's three weeks since Renee Marchmont's operation. It's been an anxious time. She's still recovering, but more nerve-wracking has been the wait for her results to see if the cancer has spread, to see if, at 24, she has a future. What have you been told in terms of your results? 15 more lymph nodes were taken and they've all come back clear. Yeah, so when you got that news? Oh, ecstatic. I just, I didn't know what to do. I started to cry, actually. <laughs> Are you completely in the clear now? Not necessarily, no. It, um, there, there is still that chance that it is in my bloodstream and so we have to keep an eye out whether it shows up anywhere else. You want to sit with Daddy? You see what Daddy's getting done? Yeah. For Stephen Nilsson, his only chance lies in chemotherapy. Come on. Yeah, high five. Yeah. He's already planned a goodbye to his son. I was supposed to get myself organised and do a bit of a video diary and that sort of thing. Record some things that I possibly won't get to say to him. Yeah. What sort of things do you think you might like to say? Oh, that's why I haven't started yet, because I don't know where to start. <laughs> so things that I want to say to him are just that, you know, I'm sorry I can't be there and that I hope that me not being there hasn't affected him too much. Sorry. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.